What's one thing you're gonna change going into next season? I wish I could move up a weight class. Like, I'm quitting YouTube. I'm not gonna do anything with wrestling. Today we're gonna have a nice little Q&A. I feel like most of my videos, you know, over this past year have just been straight tournament or dual meet. And a lot of times I don't think you guys actually see, I guess me, I guess more on a personal level. Yes, of course, I'm like kind of always talking and kind of giving my takes on my wrestling performance. But if you guys watch the podcast too, I guess you guys know me a little bit more from there. Um, but basically I thought this would be another good idea. I've done a little bit of Q&As before, but nothing in recent memory. So let's start it off, shall we? How many people in your family have wrestled? Now, basically the oldest person in my family who has wrestled, who set the tone, was my grandpa. We actually had him on the podcast to share a little bit about his story, but also my dad followed him, and then my two brothers as well. I tried to get my sisters involved. I have like twin younger sisters, but they were they were gonna be so good if my mom just would allow them to go in wrestling. Like they could have been, they could have been it. What do you have to say to ask new guys to try the sport? Honestly, I would just tell them your experience, just the positive benefits from it. Uh, a lot of times everyone sees wrestling as so just weird, has all the stigmas. And yes, of course, wrestling is so hard. If you describe a wrestling practice, if you really understand that it doesn't compare to baseball, it doesn't compare to football, like wrestling is, it's the toughest thing you can do. But that is the hardest part is literally just signing up for wrestling. As soon as you sign up, as soon as you make that commitment, I mean, it's pretty easy. Once you get stuck in wrestling, like you get probably addicted like I am. But also just realize too, like, yes, I think wrestling can be basically for everyone, but at the end of the day, like people's mentality, people's, the way they live their lives, like wrestling is not for everyone. Like not everyone can do this. Would you ever consider moving up a weight class? Trust me, I wish I could move up a weight class. Honestly, for me, it just comes down to, Next year is basically gonna be my last year, you know, on a team wrestling in college. And given, I guess, the position I put myself in, it really doesn't make sense for a team. And specifically for me, I just, I guess, just the guys I wrestle and the path I, that I see myself to attain a national title is just, honestly, at the end of the day, just the way how the whole team aspect works out too. Like, I believe, I know we can win a team national title this next year. And so not only, I guess, for myself, but also for the team. I mean, it just makes perfect sense just to stay at 141. Best way to recover after an injury injury while still getting better. So thankfully for me, I think there's another question here asking about injuries. So I'll save, I guess, my story about that. But the biggest thing you can do is your mentality, right? Or working out the other areas that are not hurt. For instance, if someone like broke their leg or did something to their ankle, rolled their ankle a little bit. Guess what? You can still be hitting arms. You can still be doing push-ups, pull-ups. You can still be doing anything else that doesn't involve that leg. You know, if it's your hand, heck, you can still do lunges. And if it's weighted lunges, yeah, use your other hand, grab a kettlebell and start walking up and down. So not only can you focus like on the mental aspects, like journaling, just on a sheet, you know, what were your emotions? What were your feelings? What was going on during your best matches and worst matches? And stick to the ones that you do on the good matches. Little mindset tip for you there. Shout out to Wrestling Mindset. And Honestly, just taking the precautions of recovery. Just because you hurt something doesn't mean you just should sit there and just keep your leg elevated and put some ice on it. Like do some recovery workouts. That's one thing I got to college that honestly, it just wasn't a really a thing in high school. In high school, we were basically taught, you know, it's like you don't want to be seen in a training room because it's like, you just don't want to be hurt. You want to practice, right? But now in college, you know, we have the ice baths. We have like the boots to put on our legs to make us, you know, feeling great at all times. So being able to actively recover and using the tools available to you, that's super, super crucial. What does it take for you to be a good wrestler at the college level? At the end of the day, it just takes patience and focus. I came into college, a, you know, Wisconsin high school state champion. My first year wrestling, it was the COVID year. I went one and three. My next year, 12 and 13. The year after that, I think I went like, you know, 22 and five, let's say. You know, it's, you know, and now I'm just like, I think I finished just about the same. It's not where you are that matters. It's where you're going. It's taking a look at the mirror and also just going into practice with the focus of being like, what can I do to get better today? Cause trust me, like when I'm walking into to those first college practices, you know, honestly, like that whole first year, like I just get beat up, up and down the lineup. But what that does is it calluses you. It calluses your mind, your spirit. You know, when you're on your back and guys are rubbing your face in the mat like you're gonna learn that you don't want to be there <laughs> so guess what you learn to get better and if you can come in day in and day out and just take the beatings and learn from them be calloused just callous your body and callous your mind who wins in a fortnight wow this could probably be the easiest question i've ever answered who wins in a fortnight one if you won between you and crosby it's it's me guys i don't know if you know this but you put me in box fights you put me in build fights it's game over i mean 120 120 frames i mean i don't play on pc but heck i got that controller aimbot so 
That's all that needs to be said there. What's one quote that keeps you going? Now, actually, I'm going to bring in a quote that Kelsey absolutely loves. I think she has, she has this hanged up in a room, actually. So it's actually in the Bible. It's Jeremiah 29, 11, And it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And just regardless, applying this to anything in life, applying this to anything in wrestling, just knowing that there is a plan ahead of greater things than whatever is going on. And that's, that's, that's the beauty of all things, is that whether it's good or whether it's bad, Nothing ever lasts forever. So the time you're in, if you're just in a time of struggle, guess what? That time is gonna end. Guess what? If you're in a time of just happiness, pure joy, that time is gonna end. So just knowing to appreciate it in the good times and also in the bad times, just know that, you know what? This isn't gonna last forever. What's one thing you're gonna change going into next season? So next season, I think it's gonna mark my 16th or 17th year of wrestling. And if there is one thing that I could change and will change, you know, I got to get that in my head, is to gas myself out during my wrestling matches. Biggest thing I learned this year was that I have everything available for me to win a national title. But guess what? It comes down to my performance and I am not performing my best unless I am leaving everything on the mat. And, you know, I've been preaching that here on this YouTube channel. It's like, that's the biggest thing that I think to get people to that next level is you can't wrestle to not lose. And sometimes when I walk into, let's say NCAAs, you know, I wrestle to not lose and that just happens. So I think it's gassing myself out and honestly, just like letting God take over my life, like take over my actions. And, you know, I pray before every match of like, how both of our wrestlers will be safe. And, you know, David Carr in his national championship interview, he said before the, ma the match uh, versus O'Toole, he prayed uh, that God can give him just, you know, infinite energy and ultimate stamina to last for the match. So honestly, just gassing myself out. Like if I know if I'm gassing myself out, that guy is gonna be broke. Do you think it's good for football players to wrestle and why? I'll tell you what, especially if you're in high school, especially if you're just starting out, yes, football players should wrestle. And guys, you, if you're a football player watching this, you don't have to cut weight in order to wrestle. The hand fighting that you're gonna learn, the pressure, but not only does it teach you, you know, how to tackle, how to hand fight, but also to how to fall. So ultimately, I think it's a good idea. Honestly, just even try it out for a season, like wrestling, just the skills of a perfect takedown will help you in football. Is it possible to reach the success you did starting late? I actually saw this story. I think it was a, a team in division two. I think it's called Cutstown or Cuztown. Anyways, uh, wrestler there. Actually, he started wrestling his freshman year of high school, and now I, th I think he's even a two-time NCAA D2 All-American. I've been wrestling for 17 years. I still haven't gotten myself an All-American. So yes, if you like start late in high school and you, whatever it is, like there's stories like this all across the board, you can 100% be a good wrestler and better than me. But maybe not, because I could be the GOAT. What are your future plans after college? Wow. Um, yeah, see, this is crazy because like, I'm quitting YouTube. I'm not gonna do anything with wrestling. I'm prob, ah, man. I think I'm just gonna live at my parents' house the rest of my life. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm gonna continue YouTube, of course. This has been, you know, my only job for the past, uh, I'd say four years. Two years prior, I was working like masonry work and I did uh, like a, like kind of like a factory job. But when that law changed that you can make money and like claim it legally in the NCAA, I mean, that was just kind of, I kind of ran with that. And um, I'm so blessed to be able in this position to continue to do this. And the visions that I have uh, for myself, not only for myself too, but Clash of Combat and just wrestling as a whole and mixed martial arts heck. I'm very, very looking forward to just this summer to show you, I guess, what we've been working on, our future plans, but just making the best wrestling content in the wrestling world, something that the wrestling world hasn't seen. And I just, I love wrestling. I love making content. And at the end of the day, like that's what I'm gonna continue to do. So I love doing this. But also maybe you can do jujitsu actually, do some jujitsu tournaments because I mean, it, it, it might get kind of weird if I just go to like old, I could go to old man's tournaments, wrestle some old guys, but I, I do want to get into jujitsu, put some guys in like arm bars and rear naked chokes. Who's the best wrestler you have ever faced? Now, statistically speaking, the best wrestler I have ever faced, who I guess has the biggest accomplishments is Keegan O'Toole. I've, I've wrestled O'Toole now, it, like we probably wrestled like three or four times in youth. I think he would like always beat me at regionals or, you know, some tournament out there. And uh, we faced one time in high school and it was my first ever tournament we met in the, was it the final? I think, yeah, it was the Gunslinger Wrestling Tournament Finals. I actually made a video on this, um, I think just 
year, a year or two ago. And, you know, looking now, you know, he's a two-time Division One national champion. He just got third, and he got the Pinners Award, so he got the most pins in the tournament, and uh, he's going to the Olympic trials. And what's your favorite story of wrestling, high school or college? Hmm. Okay, I'll start with the college one. It doesn't involve wrestling. Basically, when I was at Nationals, the first year I went to Nationals, so Alec Hunter was on our team. And basically, he... So, unfortunately, I, I had to bleep that out, um, but if you could uh, read my lips or somehow figure out what I said, that was probably a college moment that was craziest. But I guess favorite high school moment, I'd say, again, away from competition. I remembered it was, uh, I think it was shortly after season, uh, my sophomore year of high school, and we did these Waldo's Wrestling tournaments, and we would just basically do like a mini bracket we just have after school, um, and we'd like bring in just, you know, like random just kids who just weren't in wrestling that we just did this tournament for, and we posted posted it to YouTube and just had like a really fun time and we had like a podium and it was just like a fun time and you know I think wrestling just transcends just culture and for us to really care about it that much and just have honestly just have fun with a bunch of our friends like that was just it was just such good times so shout out to West Benice Wrestling. What type of people did you hang around to reach your goal in life? Wow that is very philosophical. I'll tell you what in high school you know, there's gonna be those kids that you know you grew up with that are ended up gonna go to maybe let's say like parties, you know, start drinking or start like you know doing vapes or whatever it is. And it's very very easy to kind of fall into that like maybe they don't even like peer pressure you, but it's easy to be like okay, wait, okay, if they're doing this, you know, like you know like okay, let me try, like let me go to all these stuff, let me go to all this stuff. But you also have to look yourself in the mirror and think where do you see yourself going in life or what goals do you have? And in order to accomplish goals, you need to make sacrifices. So of course you can be going in a direction, right? Like you can be moving, but if you're on a treadmill, you're not going anywhere. Like if, if you want to be, let's say a state champion wrestler, you can be focused, go to practice, do, you know, be like lifting and stuff, but then you're going to like these parties and you're just getting like, let's say like blackout drunk or you're vaping and just killing your lungs. Like you're on a treadmill going nowhere. You're, you're not gonna get to your goal. So it's it's allowing to sacrifice these things for a better life for yourself. So honestly, I was even a kid back in the day, like in high school, I'd just watch a ton of YouTube. I'd like watch like, you know, all like the business CEOs of like, you know, like those motivational videos or a big thing too, like if you don't have people around you to, I guess, hang out with to lead you in the right direction, there are people online that can lead you in a better direction. And that's kind of one thing I try to be on this channel is to kind of to be the outlet. Uh, you know, if there's people out there who are in a situation where maybe they don't hear the most positive things in their team or in their home life, but whenever you come on my channel, like maybe you can, you know, feel like, positive of being like, wow, like maybe I can go after something. Maybe I can change. Maybe there is more out there for myself. So um, basically just find those other outlets and uh, stick to them. What was the hardest thing you overcame during high school? Well, uh, this was my junior year of high school. I was ranked number one in the state of Wisconsin. I go into my sectional tournament. I think I'm like, what am I? I'm 48 and one at this, or yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm 48 and who knows? But anyways, I lose in the finals of the sectional tournament. Top top two go to state, mind you. And I lose to actually a fellow teammate now, uh, the guy who wrestles at 149, shout out to Spieler, he just All-American for us uh, at Parkside. But And he was actually ranked number two in the state at that time, but then I had a wrestle back match. And this wrestle back, the winner would go to state. And I just like, I knew I was gonna win, basically. It's just like, oh, I, like I knew I should've won that match. And I walked in and I, just got beat and I didn't make it to state. And I remember walking into a back room and just, I was so shook by the whole event. And like, I would like, I was just like, I had a big black eye too. So I was like super ugly that way. And I was just like crying like a little bit. I wasn't even crying initially, but like when I had to walk back, you know, like up the stands and it's just like, that was my first ever, ever like just shocked moment. And I remember just being at home and thinking like, I, I can't go, you know, I'm not gonna be competing at state. Like that was the, my favorite time of the entire year. And that was the one thing I was looking forward to. Like we go to the hotel, it's, you know, my dad, my grandpa's there, you know, just like, like a big family, just like a fun day. And you know, it's at the Cole Center, it's Wisconsin State Wrestling, it's amazing. And I couldn't do it and I couldn't be there. But the next year I ended up winning the state title. So going from being number one to not going to state, to being the guy to win it, that was um, that was quite the story, and look at the position we got this year. I um, I'm a top guy in Division Two, who does an All-American, 
Where does that leave me? Looks like the same position four years ago. So, um, yeah. Best muscle groups to train to pr improve performance on the mat. Well, definitely ever since I got to college, a big thing that we focus on is grip strength because these, these are men we're wrestling. They're not boys. So, I mean, rope climb with your back. You're also getting your grip strength in there. Farmer's walks, farmer's carries with some big weights. Hip mobility too. That's been a big thing for me recently that I think is just so, so crucial, especially after I wrestled Stevan Michich. Um, if you guys watched that video, world champion. The big thing he taught me was from a defensive side, how important hip pressure and all these things are to make himself, you know, feel more heavy than he was. And I mean, his defense was unmatched. He was like two weight classes below me. And I'm like, how do you feel that strong and that heavy? But I mean, uh, hips are super crucial and just kind of knowing what to do. But a big thing to think about too, when you're lifting is don't lift like you're looking like, you know, sea bum. You got to lift like an athlete. When is the podcast with Nick Suriano? Dude, I, I, as maybe as soon as the Olympic trials are over, um, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is hopefully, is, I don't know if we can drive 26 hours, that's a long hike, but hopefully we can get plane tickets. And so maybe a big thing too, guys, because the podcast doesn't make much money, you can support using the Clash of Combat Cauliflower Capsule Drop, dropping April 3rd. That might've already dropped. Um, I'm not sure when I'm gonna post this, but basically buying all the merch from Cauliflower, that link is in the description below. Eventually when that comes out on April 3rd, that directly goes back into content. So maybe we sell some shirts, Maybe begin Nick Siriano on the page. What's your mindset after losing at an important tournament? My eighth grade year of wrestling, I knew I could win that, that's the state title. You know, my dad had set up, you know, a picture on my room of saying like, you know, state title. And I, I had like above my bed, I had like, you know, state champ of the year it was like eighth grade, what my weight was. And I, I knew I could win. I knew I could win that state title. And I was in the semifinals, I believe it was, or it was the quarterfinals. And I ended up losing to uh, a guy actually I wrestle at practice all the time named Lucas Ben. Basically, I was just in distraught. I was just facing a wall and you know, I'm like, I'm probably so much more emotional back then. And I was just like crying. And my dad just kept saying, next best thing, next best thing. And guess what? I came back and I ended up getting third and I beat him. I beat that same guy who beat me before for third place. So it, it's having that, that character and that attitude of mind that, yeah, of course, to, to be the champ, everyone wants to be the champ. That's what you're there to do. But sometimes if you lose, you get the next best thing. You, you do what you can. And of course, I look at my NCAA tournament. Like I went into that same, you know, uh, backside match the same way I, I approached the frontside match. I was like, I'm that dude. I'm winning. You're, you're right. Like I didn't win that blood round match and it just, sometimes it just happens, but it's always the next best thing. So yeah, I can be frustrated at, you know, that tournament performance and stuff. But after that tournament and what I'm thinking now, it's like, okay, what's the next best thing? Heck, I got one more national title to aim for. What was your worst injury? Now, um, I thankfully haven't had much injuries, um, which is amazing has been a blessing but i would say my worst injury has actually been my thumb in high school um basically someone tried to lat drop on me and i braced weird or something and i know it sounds so weird it sounds like oh it's, it's his thumb right but i had to wear like a thumb guard for no joke two and a half years and i had to wear it during like even in the summers during like masonry work where i was like with wheelbarrows it was the most like painful thing ever because it just wouldn't go away i actually couldn't even wrestle at the you know free self state and greco tournament like okay that just sounds so bad like looking back like i was a wimp but trust me like it was i don't know what was wrong with it and we like it was just it was bad thankfully it is perfect now so um but yeah staying healthy is crucial what was your first wrestling match like ah uh, man i was in first grade so all i can remember is um, honestly, I don't really remember the, ma I know exactly who I wrestled in the match. I don't know his name, but I know he like blonde hair. And I only remember this because it was in my state video. Um, but I just remember grabbing a leg and just moving, I guess. I, I remember losing, I got second place that tournament. And the, the reason I lost that one of the match was because the guy was on my leg and I had both his ankles and I was just pulling on his ankles to try to do something. But that's, that's really all I can remember from that tournament. How should one treat their first year of wrestling? Treat it as just a giant learning experience. Just know that there are Olympic champions who their first year of wrestling never won a match. Yes, that the, literally the best guys in the world in their first year of wrestling didn't win a match. And I'll tell you what, if you like first run high school, you're basically almost guaranteed to win a match. Like if you show up to practice, if you do, you know, extra stuff outside of practice, if you go lift, if you do, you know, push-ups during TV commercials or whatever it is, like if you have focus, if you if you have a goal and you set it for yourself, I pr like I promise you'll win at least one match. 
but just use it as a learning experience. The more mat time you get, the more better wrestler you're gonna be. Like everything, it takes time and don't be discouraged so fast. So that's gonna end off this Q&A. Um, this actually went a lot longer than I thought, but these questions were all great. Thanks guys so much for the submissions. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. Shout out to my patrons. We'll see you guys next video. Let me know if you're on skate Rollin', rollin' with a gang Tully, Tully, man, you shake Tully, Tully with a gang